Community Television. You're watching West Hartford Community Television. You're watching West Hartford Community Television. You're watching West Hartford Community Television. For the community, by the community. Good afternoon and uh, welcome back to our now annual <laughs> Conversation on the Arts. Uh, my name is Natalie Carpenter and I am speaking with D'Artagnan Reed, the founder and artistic director of the Hartford City Ballet. So, hello again. Hello again. <laughs> uh, wow, this is really great. Uh, Natalie, thank you so much for uh, having this conversation with me. Uh, and thank you to West Hartford Public Access for allowing us this, uh, this great opportunity to, to have this conversation. Absolutely. So it's been a busy, busy year for the ballet. Yes, yes. A lot has been going on uh, in the past year since our last conversation. Um, first and foremost, uh, the company has moved uh, from our old location on Farmington Avenue uh, to new locations, uh, 6,000 square feet. Uh, that is 85 Gillette Street in Hartford. Um, there we're on the second floor and it's the former Hartford Foundation for Public Office Space. And so we're currently under renovation to um, knock down walls and expand uh, the interior to suit a dance studio, mirrors, bars, and floor. Um, so we're really excited about that. Uh, 6,000 square feet is a lot of space to, uh, to, 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 to play with. Yeah. Um, so we're really, really excited about that. Um, a whole host of sponsors um, have come on board also in the past year. Um, and I'm not going to name them all, um, but they, they range from uh, 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 local support uh, from Webster Bank, from Bank of America, uh, Hartford Foundation Public Giving, and range all the way to uh, individual indiv individuals. Uh, and um, we're really thankful uh, for that increased and growing support. Um, some of the work we've been doing in the community at, within this new space uh, has been with some of the immigrants um, over on South Marshall. So some of those uh, immigrants include the Corinne, uh, young dancers, uh, ages three to, to 12 years of age, uh, who we, we provide dance classes for at our space at no cost to their families. Um, and some of those girls, uh, some of those young, those young dancers um, have also since become uh, School of Hartford City Ballet participants, so that, that scholarship has extended well beyond the, um, just the, the one or two days a week that we were seeing these kids from the community, um, sponsored by the City of Hartford, I should say. The, um, the other uh, thing that we've been doing, which I, I think is really interesting, is working with a Muslim population, and uh, especially in the climate the way things are today, uh, to keep an open mind at the studio um, and to be open um, and inviting to everybody uh, from every background um, has been huge. And so on Sundays, um, we've been having a, a small Muslim population come in, and they've been doing religious dances. And so we're really thankful that they decided to use our space for that, um, and we hope that, that that initiative grows and continues. Um, some other fun things that we've been up to. Um, last October, we had a thriller event. That's a- Your annual thriller. Our <laughs> annual thriller <laughs> event, yes. That's a uh, Halloween-inspired um, haunted house. We, we turned the, the studio into a haunted house and the kids have a scavenger hunt. There's tons of candy. Um, the parents can come for free. It's $3 for kids. Um, and uh, they also get to learn uh, the zombie dance from Michael Jackson's Thriller, um, which is really, really exciting. And Do actually, I get to guess that you're, you by any chance are Michael Jackson? <laughs> <laughs> guilty, guilty. Um, red jacket and all? <laughs> red jacket and all, certainly, uh, certainly Michael is, is the king of pop, and I, I, you know, <laughs> I wouldn't put myself in his category, but we do our best to give the kids the full zombie treatment. And, um, I practice and learn the full zombie dance and try to teach it to the kids um, in a fun way that they can absorb. And um, we're actually going to be doing our annual thriller event um, this coming October 28th uh, from 5 to 7 at our studios. Um, so we're really, really excited to be continuing that Halloween tradition. Um, we had our, our last Nutcracker uh, at the Wazareth Athenaeum. Uh, the Athenaeum has been the home uh, for perform to performances for the Hartford City Ballet uh, for the past five years now and um, that theater holds 284 seats and it's a gorgeous theater located mm -hmm. in downtown Hartford um, but through community conversations um, we thought that it was best to 
to move to, to um, other venues in Hartford um, so that we can attract uh, new community uh, uh, participants who may or may or not have been able to get downtown Hartford to the Wadsworth. Um, so this Nutcracker this year uh, is going to be on Washington Street at the Learning Corridor. And um, uh, many of our School of Hartford City Valley students actually take um, uh, middle school classes and high school classes there. Um, so we're really excited to go home into their school uh, and to bring the Nutcracker um, into a place where um, our immediate population and then their, their friends and their loved ones, their friends and family, um, can also feel the impact of a Nutcracker right in their, in their base. So we're really, really excited about that. Um, so, and then uh, tell me more about your partnership with the uh, Cultura Mosaica. Do I yes, correct? yes, partnerships. Um, so one of our uh, newest partnerships is one with Cultural Mosaica. Um, it was established by Anna, Anna Valentina. Uh, she used to do work with Leadership Greater Hartford, mm -hmm. and uh, she did fantastic work with them. Um, but the Cultural Mosaica is is a um, is a look at the the Hispanic uh, culture and population in Hartford and how best to uh, utilize the Hispanic community. And when I say Hispanic community, I mean from, uh, from a range from Latina to Brazilian to Puerto Rican to, um, I know that there's a, a lot of class differentials in there. So how do you tie all those together? What are some cu cultural themes, um, some cultural identities, and how do we bring th this group of people together organized? Um, and so we're really, really happy about this partnership. Um, Hartford City Valley is the umbrella organization uh, to Cultural Mosaic, uh, and we look forward to having um, or to supporting them while they grow this Hispanic movement uh, in the Hartford population. Um, another uh, another part continuing partnership uh, with the City of Hartford uh, was a, a city-sponsored Vacation Arts Week. Now, in April, uh, when kids in Hartford are off from school for a week, uh, they get to come to the Hartford City Ballet for uh, a Monday through Friday, nine to five, uh, full basically. Uh, camp and um, so they have dance classes um, they have uh, tap classes they have uh, lyrical and jazz um, they do arts and crafts um, they have their lunch and their snack time also um, some time to fool around um, ballet history um, is also one of the classes that they have during that time um, but that city sponsored vacation arts week in April is free uh, for any parents who live in Hartford and if you're from surrounding areas uh, there was a nominal $125 for the week uh, registration fee. Mm -hmm. But um, like I said, we had 95% Hartford participants, so 95% of the uh, 36 kids that we served uh, were free and enjoyed this 9 to 5 uh, City of Hartford sponsored week, and then the rest came from uh, surrounding areas. Um, our older girls, our older young dancers uh, mm -hmm. in the School of Hartford City Ballet have also been uh, very active in the community. Uh, recently, they were invited to perform um, at the town and county. Uh, the town and county actually invited me uh, and several other, several other uh, Hartford um, community activists in Hartford to have a conversation about some of the barriers that may keep kids from getting exposed to the arts. Mm -hmm. And so I spoke at length about that um, at the town and county, but several of our girls performed variations from Sleeping Beauty, um, and that was well received. Um, uh, and also, just recently, uh, at St. Thomas Seminary, our girls were invited to the Deputy Mayor of Bloomfield's uh, reception ball. And so they went there and they performed for that. And so, um, you know, I, I know I've been jumping around the globe, but there's been just a whole host of things um, that we've been up to. And I would highly recommend anybody to like us on Facebook. And you can, you can see day to day, week to week, and out for months, um, how, just how busy we've been. Um, in addition to looking at the website if you're interested um, in partnerships or other classes um, and uh, looking ahead to Hartford City Ballet schedule in the summer and in the fall. Perfect, and that's just HartfordCityBallet.org. That's correct, that's correct, HartfordCityBallet.org um, on 85 Gillette Street in Hartford, and you can come by anytime that we're there. It'll be Great. fantastic. Perfect, and um, I know June's a busy month for the ballet. You've got a, a trip with the kids to New York. Yes, yes. And, and then a big spring showcase, student showcase, really. Yes. So tell us about them both. Yes, so uh, we start June, uh, the first Saturday in June, uh, for our annual uh, trip to New York City. Lots of annuals. <laughs> Lots of annuals. <laughs> uh, we get to take uh, 30 families down from Hartford to New York City, uh, where they get to take a class backstage at the Metropolitan Opera House wow. um, with an American Ballet Theater certified teacher. They're backstage with the American Ballet Theater Company, uh, and then they watch a performance. This year, uh, we're going to be taking class uptown on 72nd Street um, at Steps. Steps is a famous um, dance studio that 
offers classes ranging from ballet to tap to jazz to fire breathing um, that anyone off the street can walk in and pay a nominal fee to do. Um, and then we'll have lunch in Central Park. So June starts off with a trip down to New York. Uh, again, our annual trip, which we're really, really excited about that. And then the following week, um, Saturday, June 18th, we're going to be here in Hartford performing outdoors. Our very first appearance at the Riverfront Recapture, the Mortensen Plaza uh, here in Hartford. Uh, we're going to be at 4 o'clock on that day. We're going to be having a workshop that's free uh, for anyone who wants to take it, young children, 9 years old and up. Um, and then uh, at 6 o'clock, we'll have our Sleeping Beauty premiere. Now, our Sleeping Beauty um, is, again, a free performance, which will be downtown at Riverfront. Um, we're going to be inviting uh, the New American Youth Ballet, some of our friends in New York City, another school um, with whom we've had a long-standing partnership with, uh, a collaboration. Um, I just went down there this past weekend um, to participate in their premiere of Someday, um, and I also danced um, some excerpts from the ballet Don Quixote. Wow. Um, so the New American Youth Ballet will be here on June 18th. Um, our kids are really super excited. Sleeping Beauty is going to be a full Sleeping Beauty from the prologue to Act 1 to our guests. Act two, uh, and then wrapping up with our Act three. Um, June is going to be very, very busy with with the um, with the outdoor event. That's a free event. Uh, Saturday, June eighteenth. I just want to make sure I get this right. Um, with the free dance class at four o'clock, and then the performance starting at six. Um, we're also going to have a. Um, of awards presentation after that performance so we hope people if they do come that they'll stay around for that um, and then we'll have some hopefully some pizza and some cake and some soda right there um, at Riverfront uh, so people can meet the performers and we can celebrate what's really the, the end uh, the official end of the School of Harvest City Ballet's performing calendar. Okay, great. So, so free performance. So, if it's free, uh, do you need people to like reserve a spot? Is it just you know show up, find a place to like park a blanket what are, you, what are you envisioning so the riverfront is actually very very beautiful very gorgeous they have a lot of grassy knolls down there um, plenty of places for people to set up their picnic um, I would I would get there earlier the earlier the better and um, we're gonna be there all day from 12 o'clock on teching and laying down floor um, and if that's something that people like to see um, the the you know, how do you load the stuff into the theater, um, getting ready, warming up lights, um, seeing the dancers rehearse. Um, we, we recommend coming out and setting up for that. Um, I would come uh, if you wanted to come later for the workshop. Um, so your young, your young dancer, uh, your, young, your young child can uh, participate in that workshop. Come at 3 o'clock and uh, you'll see a lot of the School of Harvard City Ballet students there warming up on the stage. Um, just because the workshop starts at 4 doesn't mean they can't get on the stage and dance around and do some twirls with, uh, with some School of Harvard City Ballet kids. Um, I think that'll be fun. Um, and uh, the, better, the better place you get, obviously you'll be in a much better contention for um, prime seats to watch the premiere um, of Sleeping Beauty, which, which is going to be very, very gorgeous, very, very beautiful. We have some special effects um, that we're keeping under wraps until that day. Um, so we're really excited to premiere this Sleeping Beauty. Um, but if I were, you know, if I were interested, I would get there early, get your space, um, bring your cooler and your, and your picnic, and uh, come and have a wonderful time with us. Okay. Now, will there be like food and beverage vendors available, or, or is it really bring, bring your own? Um, at this stage, um, because this is Harford City Valley's first time using the Riverfront Recapture, um, it's difficult to promise vendors um, just exactly what the turnout's going to be. Um, mm -hmm. On a regular basis, the School of Harford City Valley performs um, for over 300 people. Um, our goal uh, for this, this premiere at Riverfront is to have at least 500 people. So we're looking for 200 people um, in addition who probably hasn't seen the Harford City Ballet or hasn't had a chance to come and see the Harford City Ballet. Um, or is just now becoming aware of our existence to come and check us out. Um, uh, so I would, I would, on the safe side, I would have something just so, uh, just so you have something to eat and to drink. Um, but there may or may not be vendors. Uh, if we get our 500 people or more uh, target this time next year, um, we'll hopefully have another conversation. And I can promise you much, much more. Um, some sandwiches, maybe some pizza vendors, they'll all want to come um, <laughs> to this time out. So this is our first time out. So we, uh, we really just want to have a good time with it and um, get the best turnout that we can.
Yeah, perfect. And um, so if you want more information, I'm guessing website? Absolutely. So yeah, so the, uh, the information about Riverfront is on the Riverfront's Recaptures website. Um, they have a start time there at 2 o'clock because um, they've done this annually. They have a regular presentation that goes on there. Um, so they know that people want to get there early to set up and preserve their spaces so they have good time for the workshop, good time for the performances. Um, information is also available on our website. It's more specific, um, ages 9 and up for that free dance class uh, at 4 o'clock. And then, so, wait, uh, so are adults invited too? Can parents go up there with their children? Sure. We, um, <laughs> we, and we, we do have recreational classes for adults, and many of our adults um, who have shifted and become performers, and they perform with the cast, and you'll see some of them in the Sleeping Beauty. Um, but yeah, if you would love, if people would like to pr take, take that workshop with their young dancer, by all means, we totally encourage that. Absolutely, absolutely. And then that wraps us up, and we start to transition into the summer. Okay, so um, what, what sort of training do your students do for the summer? Summer. Um, so our uh, the official start of summer for us is um, after the 4th of July. So Tuesday, mm -hmm. uh, July 5th, and the whole month of July, really, uh, we have our summer program. And um, the School of Harvard City Ballet summer program, the training of that is, is based with the American Ballet Theater National Training Curriculum. And it also uh, comes in part from the Vaganova Academy's training curriculum, which is a Chiketti-based system in uh, Russia. And um, over the past several years, uh, since I uh, retired from dancing with the American Ballet Theater, um, in addition to keeping up our relations, bringing our kids to New York to take class and to perform, um, I've had an opportunity to study. So I've been studying under the direction of Raymond Lukens, um, who once upon a time uh, was a ballet master here in Hartford, who wrote the original curriculum to train Hartford Ballet students. He went on uh, to become uh, one of the chief architects uh, of the American Ballet Theater National Training Curriculum, which is adopted the world over. And what that is, is a, is a culmination of ballet and health um, and the growth and healthy growth of dancers. Um, so it's a very methodical, well thought out way to train dancers of all ages, um, three years old and potty trained and, and, and uh, up through adults. Um, so I had the opportunity to study under him and I uh, completed that training. Um, my wife Keiko, uh, who also teaches at the school, she's the school principal, she trained in Russia at the Vaganova Academy. And uh, not only did she train in Russia at a time when they weren't accepting foreigners, um, she graduated at the top of her class. And her highest mark, one of her highest marks, uh, was in the Vaganova system. How do you, how do you train dancers? Um, so a combination of Vaganova, Chiketti, uh, and the American Ballet Theater National Training Curriculum is what our, is what our summer participants can, can expect to see. The, um, the, that first day, uh, Tuesday, July 5th, what we do is a placement class on that day. So based on your age and ability, um, the first day we'll place you um, in one of several levels for that summer program. And then over the course of that four-week summer program, uh, in addition to dancing and dance history um, and other extracurricular classes, uh, the students will be learning choreography that they will present to their parents and to friends um, at the end of the summer program, um, which, which um, we're also really, really excited about. We're hoping that the renovations that we're doing with our studio will be finished in time mm -hmm. um, so that the parents can, we can inaugurate that space with the performance uh, at the end of the summer workshop. And um, yeah, so and information about the summer workshop, um, as well as registration details, you can register online um, at hartfordcityballet.org. And uh, as, we, as we move forward, um, if people would like to send, uh, they'd like to get on an email list, um, they can do that by just sending us an email to info. Uh, at hartfordcityballet.org and we'll add them to our constant contact list and they'll get weekly updates in some cases mo monthly and quarterly reports uh, from the Hartford City Ballet so they can keep up to date with um, what it is that we're doing. Okay. Perfect. So, so that's summer. So then um, tell me about sort of um, your typical curriculum for the, the whole year, like starting in the fall. Do you have sort of like a yearly plan? I mean, and you said three-year-olds, so, so you're, you're teaching three-year-olds. Yes. So um, in the beginning, <laughs> when you're three years old and potty trains, you, uh, you, we want to inspire a love for dance. Um, so it's dancing through the imagination. And we like to cultivate and grow that love until you're about seven or eight. And then that's when it really starts to get serious. That's when your training starts to increase. In terms of days, um, if you're a younger person, three years old to six, you're probably taking one, maybe two classes a week. Um, and those classes are 60 or 90 minutes. Um, 
eight, nine, and upwards. Um, you're looking at three days, four days, five days, and then eventually seven days a week um, of intensive training right after school, 3.30 until 8.30 at night. Um, the typical life cycle of a dancer um, really kicks in around eight or nine years old. Um, so six years from, you put your finger on it when you start from eight and up. Um, if you do six years of training, you're what we call pre-professional. So you may not be old enough to accept a job and go and work in the dance world. Although some people, some companies um, do accept younger and younger people in apprenticeship roles um, and in scholarship roles um, so that they can groom people to, to be more specific for their company um, mm -hmm. or get them ready for company life earlier. Um, a lot of pre-development goes on. Um, is, um, is, uh, I lost my train of thought what I was, <laughs> what I was talking about on the, um, on the training side of it, but. Okay, so, so three, so then, so then for pre-professional, I'm guessing, so there are some kids who decide that, yes, I, I do want to take dancing a little bit further, like maybe get a scholarship to a college in the way of dance or go on to maybe something like the, the American Ballet Theater School. That's right, so there's, there's really two tracks here. The one track is you can, if, you're, if you wanna be a professional dancer, you, you're looking at a minimum of six years before you'd be ready. Um, and then there's a whole host of other things that go into it, um, aside from you know, growing past puberty and dealing with um, emotional situations like living away from your parents, managing a budget, um, these other just natural aspects, components. The other side is um, you wanna take class and you, you love to be a dancer, but you wanna go the academic route and uh, several of our girls in the past several years um, have graduated, gone on to college. Our most recent girl just got accepted to UConn. And um, we like when the girls, A, go to college, um, because it's so vital today, uh, where a college degree is so vital, um, that those students who are going to college come home for the summer, and then we re-engage them in the School of Harvard City Valley family, sometimes as teachers, uh, sometimes as interns, sometimes as volunteers. Um, so we, we have a growing network of Harford City Ballet, uh, young people who graduate and come back and share that. We think um, our main focus as a company is to allow, is to get people ready so that they want to be a professional dancer, they can. Um, but we do respect uh, the, the individual's wishes and the wishes of the family. Um, sometimes um, even you know, really, really talented dancers who could become professionals decide to go to college first. Mm -hmm. um, and um, th these days we're embracing it. The good thing is that more and more companies are uh, paying for education. So uh, if, we, if we get you early enough, when we're working with you early enough, we can develop uh, the, right, the right connections with colleges and universities um, to have a nice transition where you can potentially dance with the American Ballet Theater and then take classes at the New York, at, the, at NYU. Um, or join the Boston Ballet and take class at BU, um, or even on a local scale, uh, you know, uh, keep performing with the Harvard City Ballet and, and go take class um, at, at Yale or Harvard or the University of Hartford. Um, so um, there's that academic and there's that pre-professional route. Um, both are excellent routes, of course, to take. Sure. Have any of your dancers graduated towards that professional, or, or have you found that the majority of them have gone to academics? So the School of Harford City Ballet, uh, while the company got established back in 2005, the school was established uh, with support from the city of Hartford in 2008. Mm -hmm. And so we do have several students who we've had from the beginning uh, who've crossed that six year mark mm -hmm. and they are pre-professional, they are pre-professional candidates. They are ready to join professional companies and it's incumbent on us to get them down to New York City to take class uh, at ABT, to take class uptown at Steps on Broadway, uh, and to bring New York talent this way um, so that they can start to see what kind of an environment they're growing up and going into, and they'll be much, much more prepared. Um, we have not yet had a student graduate and uh, accept a contract with a company um, on any level. Um, our last several girls who came um, already knew that they were going to college, that college was mm -hmm. their, their, their destination. And um, we helped them facilitate to that end. Um, some of them were able to uh, do variations and solos um, as part of their scholarship as part of their um, application to college and receive uh, scholarships as, an, as, a, as a result of it. Um, but we are looking forward to potentially in the next uh, three years, three years uh, having uh, our, our, one of our five-year-olds and another one we discovered at eight um, who are now uh, uh, 12 and 14 going on to become uh, our first professional dancers 
um, which would be really, really exciting achievement, mm -hmm. um, not only for the Harvard City Ballet, but the, the volunteer organization that surrounds it, the support that comes from local, national, internationally, um, that made that possible. You know, it, it really takes a community to raise a child, and um, these children, provided they, they do become these professional dancers that we know they can be, um, will be a huge marker, uh, a huge benchmark for us, and we'll be so excited um, to, to have these ambassadors of Hartford, really, um, go out and perform. And one of the reasons why that's so important um, is because back in 1989, um, an opportunity came to Kennelly School in Hartford, um, where I was a third grader at the time. And it was Winifred Johnson, who was working with the Hartford Ballet, who uh, offered us an audition. And, you know, uh, Mrs. Andrews, my third grade teacher, could, you know, convinced us that, you know, one audition could change your life. And uh, so I went to the audition and I started, I got accepted. Um, 500 people applied for that, for those 30 scholarships that were available. And I went on to receive a lifetime scholarship to dance. Um, that is up until, so from 1989 until 1999, I received a scholarship based full tuition scholarship in pre-professional ballet, um, right up until the Hartford Ballet, the original Hartford Ballet uh, closed its doors in 1998. Um, I was fortunate enough to, be, to have uh, progressed to become one of the best dancers in the state of Connecticut, and I went on to dance with one of the best companies in the United States, the American Ballet Theater. Um, and I'm just one of a handful of success stories from the Hartford Ballet, um, the school of the Hartford Ballet. There are students who went on to the Royal Ballet in London. Um, there are students who are still performing down in Houston Ballet. Um, there are students who have their own companies out in uh, Colorado. Um, and there are people who are teaching all over the United States, um, nationally and internationally as well. Um, the, the, that, that scholarship initiative, um, that ability to take uh, a young person and change their life forever, um, to give them an opportunity to go outside of their community, to travel the world, um, and then essentially to come home and, and make sure that the opportunity that they had still exists for younger people to still uh, accept and to, ha to have as well. Um, so, uh, and uh, Dulcie Giadoni, our executive director who has raised her, her two boys here and now on to her grandchildren, uh, two lovely twins uh, and a young man um, who are enrolled in the School of Hartford Ballet, uh, feel the same way. Uh, she's had her son positively affected um, by scholarships to uh, a theater program here in Hartford, which no longer exists. And so it's so vital um, for those of us that can to do something to make sure that these initiatives uh, exist. Excellent. Perfect. So, um, so while we're closing up, um, so to say, so um, School of Harvest Ballet also offers classes for adults. Yes, like we me, do. maybe someone who hasn't been involved in dance in a good 20 years, but, uh, but if you want to get back into it. Absolutely. The, uh, the recreational classes that we have right now uh, on Sundays from 2 to 3. And so every Sunday, uh, except uh, Memorial Day weekend coming up, uh, we have adult classes that um, actually a lot of people from the community have been taking. Um, anybody, it doesn't matter if it's your first day or your 50th class, um, the classes are geared towards um, a full body motor function uh, so that you can have the experience of a dance class um, without all the pain um, that some of our <laughs> students um, experience later. Um, it's really robust, it's a good cardio workout. Um, and generally speaking, a lot, of the, a lot of the adults who start taking those beginner classes find that they, they want to come and kind of mingle with the school crowd. So they start coming during the week to more intermediate mm -hmm. classes. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't Perfect. seen anybody go from intermediate to advanced, but I'm sure that'll happen soon. Okay. Well, thank you for taking this time with me. Um, our time is up. And uh, okay. always a pleasure. All right. Thank you so much. I'll thank see you, you next year. Yeah. <laughs>